Hi, everyone. This is Aaron, and you are listening to Walnut Notes, the official podcast for the members and friends of FCBC Walnut. Today's guests are Ray and Alice Chin. Ray and Alice serve as mentor couples for In Transit, our young adult fellowship, and they also have two teenage sons. So, Ray and Alice, I wanted to ask you, how can parents encourage their children to own their faith while still guiding them in the Lord? Thanks for listening. Once I heard a Bible teacher share how believers may have abundant knowledge about God, but their daily life showed no evidence of the living God. As parents, we know our children are a blessing from the Lord. However, we also need to remember that we are called to be our children's primary spiritual leaders who will show them how to reflect God to others as they live their lives for the Lord. As our children's primary spiritual leaders, we begin our boys' spiritual journey by making sure they join the church community while they were babies. Thanks to many faithful Sunday school teachers and children's leaders at Bible Study Fellowship, our boys attain Bible knowledge about God's divine character, sovereign grace for mankind, purpose for His creation, and His heart for those who desire Him. They learn numerous Bible stories through the years on Sundays and Fridays. They witness a great deal of life-changing transformations from others sharing their testimonies. They heard others giving praises and gratitude to the Lord regarding their growing faith. They witness beautiful celebrations of the faith from others, whether it was through a baptism or a spirit-filled testimony sharing about a mission trip, and they were moved deeply by them. But one question remains. What does believing in Jesus really mean to them? How do we parents encourage our children to own their faith while guiding them in the ways of the Lord? First, we parents must remain close to Jesus in our own spiritual walk. Our commitment in spending time in God's word brings delight to the Lord and yields positive influences on our children. One thing we found really helpful in encouraging our children to own their faith was to ask them what they learned from Sunday school and worship service. As our pastors preach from the same passage in both youth and adult services, parents and youth may discuss what they learned from the passage, and more importantly, what changes they decide to make in themselves. For example, they would deal with conflicts with grace, struggle with patience, or wait for God's timing with perseverance. Changes in life are a strong indicator of conviction in the heart, which results from listening to the Word. Second, we parents may encourage our children to own their faith by repeatedly pointing them to Jesus. For example, we always tell our boys that Jesus is dad's and mom's Savior, God, and Lord because we truly believe in Him. Jesus did die on the cross once for all, and pay for the punishment of our sins. But you must choose to accept Him to make Him your Savior. So write your own stories with God and taste the goodness of the Lord. Parents may point their children to Jesus by praying for them and with them, reminding them to always seek the Lord first before making any decisions. For example, seek the Lord in deciding which college to attend so they may fulfill God's purpose for them. Another example is to have the children pray to the Lord before any competitions they participate in, asking the Lord to bless them with victory within His will. Also, we should always give thanks to the Lord regardless of the outcome. As we point our children to Jesus, we enable our children to recognize that our God is sovereign, everything is under His control, and God cares about everything in their lives. Third, We as parents need to remember that we are no higher or wiser than God. As hard as it is to see our children make the wrong choices and suffer the consequences, we have to allow them to experience some failure in life. We have to encourage them to pray to God for wisdom on how to make a decision and give them the opportunity to make that decision, whether or not we agree or fear it may lead to other problems. The key is letting them go to God for wisdom on a regular basis. If we micromanage every decision they make, will they wind up trusting man's wisdom or God's wisdom? Will they trust that God will help them make a wise decision and accept the outcome and deal with it, 
or will they become unable to cope with hard times and choices? They need to see that God is sovereign and that he will guide the, guide us the right way always. So parents, let's all s- secure our own faith so that we can also help our children develop and secure their own faith and become men and women of God. Thanks, Ray and Alice, and thank you everyone for listening to our podcast here at FCBC Walnut. Don't forget that you can get all of the episodes of Walnut Notes delivered via YouTube, Spotify, or your favorite podcast player. Just search for FCBC Walnut. For more information about our Young Adult Fellowship in Transit, or for more information about our fellowships for children and youth, visit our church website at fcbcwalnut.org. And don't hesitate to stop by the church office or visit one of the welcome booths on Sundays. There are many opportunities to learn, grow, and serve at FCBC Walnut, so let us know how we can help you to get plugged in. I also want to encourage you to subscribe to Walnut Weekly, our social media email newsletter. We deliver fresh resources for free and provide peeks behind the scenes from the social media ministry of FCBC Walnut. Subscribe today to stay up to date so you never miss out. Find the link in the show notes, but you can also find the link under the resources menu on our website at fcbcwalnut.org. Thanks. See you soon.